Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Veg Networking Canada. It is important for all of us to acknowledge, honor, and respect that many of us are located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of many Indigenous peoples of Canada. Veg Networking Canada is a community where vegan plant-based companies connect and collaborate. Today, we have a very special guest with us. She's a superhero for sustainable soil and gardening practices a champion for the power of community and connection. And she is a proponent of the Hippocrates quote, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Veg Networking Canada is pleased to introduce the co-founder of the Veganic Agriculture Network and the founder of Learn Veganic. Welcome, Meg Kelly. Hi there, Justin. Hi, Meg. Thank you so much for joining all of us here at Veg Networking Canada and everybody else who is listening as well, who has a green thumb and interested in gardening and especially veganic gardening. So why don't you first tell everybody about your own personal vegan plant-based origin story and how that unfolded for you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I actually still remember finding out when I was six or seven years old that meat was made out of animals. I had no idea. I thought that chicken and chicken were homonyms and that there was one thing that we ate and one thing that was a bird. And I, I remember being very surprised to find out that they were the same thing. And uh, so um, I'd say even as a kid, I just kind of became aware of that. And I was, you know, calling it into question, but I didn't really start making changes till I was about 11. And when I was 11, I, I stopped eating mammals. And uh, it took me a few years to just diversify the plant foods I liked enough <laughs> to really kind of convert over to veganism. I think if I had been born 20 years later, I would have probably become vegan a lot earlier with all the, the options that are out there today. But uh, at the time we had veggie hot dogs in, in the 90s and that was about it. Uh, so um, yeah, it was really when I was kind of end of my first year of university uh, that I really felt more ready to switch over to veganism and uh, I spent that kind of that summer uh, reading websites especially the vegan street website which was one of the only uh, the only good vegan websites available in the early 2000s and uh, so I was I spent a whole summer just looking at that realizing that maybe I needed to make the switch and uh, then uh, kind of that second year of university, I started switching over. So I, I've been vegan for about 20 years now. Uh, the first couple of years were maybe, you know, involved, you know, some ups and downs and, you know, tr trying to really, you know, solidify it. But now, you know, it's been uh, about 20 years. And I think really finding a vegan community has made a big difference. Uh, back in the day, there was the Toronto Animal Rights Society that had potlucks. And then when I moved, <clears throat> when I moved to Quebec, I started vegan potluck groups in the two cities that I lived in, uh, just to kind of create community where we didn't have any. So that's that's really helped uh, with, you know, when we have a flourishing vegan community, it's just so much easier. It is so much easier. And to, to touch more on uh, vegan, uh, can you share how you first became involved with veganics and what exactly is veganic gardening? <laughs> Yeah, so I was really surprised after being vegan for a few years to find out that our vegan foods are typically grown in non-vegan ways. Uh, so, you know, I think we like to think that when we switch over from, you know, eating meat and dairy to eating fruits and vegetables, that somehow we've extracted ourselves, you know, that we've cut ourselves off from animal agriculture. But a lot of the time it's not the case. And our fruits and veggies are often grown with factory farm manure, blood meal, bone meal, fish emulsion, all sorts of things that are very much non-vegan and that ends up financially supporting animal agriculture. And, and obviously it's not in any way in alignment with you know, what we're trying to achieve by, by choosing a vegan lifestyle. Um, but you know, it's something that's a little bit hard to avoid. You know, if you go to a supermarket, you don't know what was grown with animal products and what wasn't. And even if it was labeled, it might be difficult to find anything that, that really does align with the vegan ethic. Um, so I, I learned about that around 2008. And um, at the time, uh, I made a new friend, Stefan Grillo, who's been my best friend for the last 15 years or so. And uh, he had really been examining uh, veganic agriculture because he grew up in a farming setting 
and then he became vegan and he studied organic farming and it was all based on like adding cow manure adding you know bone meal and things like that so he actually went over to europe for a few months uh to uh learn veganic gardening on on farms over there and when he came back he really wanted to start a network in north america because there's the vegan organic network that's been established in europe uh since uh, the late 90s but there was nothing in north america at all and he was going to have trouble doing it on his own because french is his first language and so i was really excited about it really interested in it and so we decided to start the veganic agriculture network uh, together in 2008 and uh, at the time i didn't even know how to garden yet i was just you know so convinced that it was information that needed to get out there and uh, <clears throat> so we interviewed a lot of farmers, we traveled across North America to visit veganic farms, and we got a lot of information out. And then at that time, I just started learning how to garden, uh, and uh, eventually teaching gardening courses and, and things like that. So it's been a very exciting activism journey. Well, and it's only going to continue because to your point, uh, you didn't know what you didn't know. And there's a lot of folks listening to this who also don't know what they don't know and maybe have never thought about soil health or, or what is soil. It's not all created equal. So very interesting information to continue to get out to the public for sure. Was the Veganic Agriculture Network sort of the birth of you becoming an entrepreneur um, and then where you're at right now with Learn Veganic or, or was there something prior to that organization that you were starting to like explore your entrepreneurial spirit? Yeah, I mean, I would say that for me, entrepreneurship is sort of an offshoot of from the activism that I do. Uh, so for me with the Veganic Agriculture Network, you know, we really started that as a volunteer activity to promote uh, you know, plant-based ways of, of farming and gardening. And after that, I worked for a nonprofit for a few years uh, where I started teaching gardening courses. And I would say that working for a small nonprofit in many ways is like having an ethical business, which in the sense of, you know, it's all about creating new projects. It's all about, uh, you know, finding new things that we can bring to the community. Um, and, uh, I, I found though that after that, I, I worked for a few years more in a regular day job and I found it was more difficult to find time to do activism. Uh, so I would say for me, entrepreneurship in a lot of ways is about being able to commit a lot of time to doing something that I believe in instead of having to do it on kind of evenings and weekends. So for me, it's more of a way of trying to be a more effective activist. That's powerful. And I think there's probably a lot of people listening to this who are thinking along the lines of, yep, absolutely. I'm in agreement with that. So that's very cool. Now, in terms of veganic gardening, um, or maybe even just gardening and soil health as a whole, feel free to answer it however you want. But the question is centered around transformations or trends within your industry. Okay, so around <laughs> soil health or gardening. Um, I, I would say one big thing is just that veganic gardening is becoming more of a thing now than it was 10 or 20 years ago. And I think that just the fact that, you know, veganism has become big enough, organic has become big enough. I think there's finally a time <laughs> that we can say, okay, vegan organic can be its own thing and, and get a bit more attention because, um, you know, I think you know, 10 or 20 years ago, veganism was so fringe. And then veganic is the fringe of the fringe, you know? So it's kind of been this question of the organic movement and the vegan movement both snowballing enough so that, you know, that the veganic can, can have its own place and, and get more attention. And so I think we sort of are at that point now uh, where we're seeing more books coming out about veganics uh, and, and more organizations, more talks online. Uh, and it's interesting because I actually think that the um, kind of the, the shutdowns of, of society uh, actually had a big impact on that because, you know, I'm one of the many people who was put in a situation where I suddenly had time on my hands. And, you know, then we get back to some of our roots in terms of the activism, you know, that that's dear to us. And uh, I remember... I, at one point, a few months into the pandemic, there was a week where there were about six veganic things happening online in the same week. And I thought that's probably more than there would have been in a typical year before, you know? And uh, so I've seen just this, you know, blossoming of, <laughs> of veganics 
uh, amongst, you know, farmers and gardeners and activists and organizations. So I think it's something we're going to see more and more of in, in upcoming years. Yeah, so it sounds like maybe a trend or a transformation is uh, people getting back to their roots, maybe more homestead style uh, mm -hmm. appetite for information. And cor correct, correct us if we're wrong, but is veganic literally just sort of vegan and organic put together? Is that what the origin of that word means? So the the word was first coined in the 1950s, just a few years after the word vegan was coined. And it was first published in a vegan society newsletter in the 50s as a contraction of vegetable organic. And so there's can be a little bit of a debate. Is it a contraction of vegetable organic or vegan organic? In some ways, it doesn't matter because it was originally printed in a vegan society magazine. Uh, so we, we tend to, find, to define it as, as vegan organic uh, together. Cool, very cool. Um, so where is Learned Veganic going in the future? And feel free if you want to kind of walk us up to speed of like the start to where we are now so then people can have a context of where you're, where Learned Veganic is going in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, a couple of years ago, we launched our first online courses. Uh, so in the past, with the Veganic Agriculture Network, we had created uh, a website full of information, but there was very little, you know, interaction. And so with Learn Veganic, uh, we wanted to create something where people who are home scale gardeners could really learn how to garden uh, using entirely plant based techniques in a way where we're collaborating with free living animals instead of kind of fighting against them and uh, to uh, really, you know, put uh, ecosystems back into place as much as we can to do some rewilding, uh, you know, to uh, nourish our soil, to build up our soil. And we really wanted to offer people a guided experience uh, with kind of, you know, step-by-step -step information that, that, that builds up, uh, but also mentorship and uh, also community building. Because I sometimes say that gardening veganically is a bit like um, being vegan in the 1970s. You know, vegans in the 1970s didn't necessarily know another vegan in their city. Uh, they kind of had to do more things by hand, like make their own tofu because they couldn't necessarily get it from a grocery store. And veganic gardening today is a bit like that. People are maybe a bit isolated in what they're doing. It's hard to walk into a garden center and get something off the shelf. We need to learn how to do more things ourselves. Uh, so, uh, a lot of what we do is, you know, bring people together through kind of discussion groups and meetups and Q&As uh, to really have this community building aspect. Uh, so uh, right now we're teaching our course, uh, which is a, like a seven week course where, where we have a class each week online and we have you know, Q&A meetups together. Um, and we, we really enjoy running that. It's just something that, you know, we've met some wonderful people from around the world who have this shared vision of, you know, gardening in a way that's kind to animals and that's kind to the earth. Uh, so it's really been a wonderful experience. And uh, in terms of where we're going, um, I'd say in some ways right now, we're kind of in that evaluation phase of, you know, we've really been trying to, you know, solidify one thing that we offer and that we offer really well to people who are, you know, starting to garden in their backyards. And right now we're in that process of, trying to figure out what other types of education people need in the veganic scene and, and what are some ways that we can offer that. Uh, so we're, we're kind of excited to, you know, be evaluating that and to see where we'll be going in the future to, to offer more types of veganic education to people. Wow. And is it safe to say then that the community would be uh, not restricted to just, it's global, right? The it's global, yeah. Yeah, people from around the world join us. From we've got someone joining us from Australia right now, and from from uh, Sweden, and uh, yeah. So um, I think that's one thing. You know, when you were asking about things that have kind of shifted, one thing that's really shifted is uh, just that shift to online education. I mean, be, before I offered gardening courses in my community, but. Um, it was a bit of an incognito veganic course that I offered before where everything I taught was plant-based, but nobody really knew it was a veganic course because I called it an ecological gardening course. But, you know, with that shift to so many things going online and everyone getting comfortable with video conferencing and, and online learning, uh, that shift that's happened in the last two or three years, um, it's really opened up this potential to, you know, find 
specific things like veganic, where that's not actually being offered in individual cities. Uh, I guess there's only a few people here and a few people there who are interested, but when we can get all of those people together in one course, there's just so much potential for community building and for sharing our experiences and learning together. Yeah, and feeling feeling connected and part of something yep. bigger than yourself. Is it safe to say then that you and you know your team of of experts essentially are able to help people coming in navigate their own climate where they currently are in the world and how? Because that I'm ass we're assuming that that's different, right? From somebody just in the east coast of Canada, the west coast of Canada, for instance, very different in terms of what your climate offers and how you can. So you guys kind of solve those problems and walk through that with Q and A and the community and everything. Yeah. So I mean, the main thing that we focus on in the course is sort of the veganic fertilization side of things because that's that's the part that's trickier. That's the part that we need to sort of veganize. Um, so information about sort of what are my planting dates or or how can I uh, you know work with you know the these dry temperatures, uh, people might be able to turn to their local gardening group for some extra support and some extra information. But if you turn to your local gardening group regarding fertilization, they're going to start saying, well, put some bone meal and put some chicken manure. Uh, whereas we'll be giving people information like put some chip branches and put some leaves and put some alfalfa. Uh, so uh, our focus is really on um, how we can do things in a vegan way. And that really doesn't change much from climate to climate because you know, composting is composting no matter where you go uh, or using nitrogen fixing plants like clover to basically be able to kind of create your own you know, nitrogen fixing, uh, uh, nitrogen producing factory in your own backyard. You can do that really in any climate. Uh, so I'd say the basic principles of veganic are the same. And then at some point, we just need to look up a planting calendar for our region and uh, and we can do it that way. Even better, even better. Uh, and someone here mentioned in the chat, um, it would be wonderful to see city community gardens um, take on these learnings um, and uh, be open minded to bring that in. And, you know, uh, I was thinking the same thing for uh, kids and yep. in education systems, um, how powerful that would be as well. Um, so does Learn Veganic or maybe you personally, um, support or collaborate with any charities or nonprofits? Yeah. I mean, one thing that's been really nice is we've actually had a lot of nonprofits join us for the course and people who are in the process of starting nonprofits. So we have, you know, discounted rates and sometimes scholarship, uh, uh, places for nonprofits and charities. And uh, some of them we've been able to really follow what they're doing and offer, you know, continued support to them. Um, one that pops to mind is there's the, the Toronto Veggie Food Bank, uh, which is an all vegan food bank. And they're actually in the process. Well, last year they started uh, a veganic mini farm in order to grow fresh produce for people who are in need. Uh, so we've been, you know, working with them from a distance, but, you know, uh, you know, collaborating um, to try to help them uh, with that project. And uh, it's, it's really wonderful actually to see the people who join us for the course. So many of them have ambitions for, you know, starting community gardens, starting gardens at schools and, um, you know, or even just, you know, making berry bushes available next to their house for all of their neighbors. Uh, so really very, very motivated people. And, uh, you know, it's just such a pleasure to be able to offer guidance um, to people who are who are trying to you know develop human, community based projects, and uh, then we also collaborate with other organizations like the Vegan Organic Network in England, uh, that's been promoting veganics internationally uh, for uh, two or three decades, and um, and I'd say that you know it's really kind of by starting Learn Veganic, it's really strengthened our our collaboration with a lot of organizations around the world. Um, so I think. You know, it's kind of collectively strengthening the the veganic movement by by doing that. Yeah, and it sounds like Learn Veganic is really like an empowerment launch pad for folks to uh, absorb the information and then pass that along within their community, whether their community is literally just their house mm -hmm. or their kid's school or whatever it might be. So it sounds like Learn Veganic is totally like a launch pad, which um, is very interesting and. It would be amazing to see um, all of the beloved animal sanctuaries 
that we all know and love mm-hmm. and support and everything like that, starting to implement uh, community gardens within their already uh, established systems and, of course, on the, the veganic front. So um, speaking of that, does Learn Veganic have any garden resources available or activities that people can participate in? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so we created a guide uh, that's called 20 Veganic Materials for Your Plant-Based Garden. Uh, and that's available at learnveganic.com slash materials. And um, it's really to show the diversity because, you know, I I was mentioning recently uh, on, on social media that, you know, with Veganic, we don't use blood meal, bone meal, manure. And then somebody said, well, that means it's essentially just compost, right? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, it's compost, but it can also be uh, using hay. You know, we have a garden, one of our gardens is entirely fertilized with hay because, you know, cow manure is just hay that was pooed out. So why involve a cow when we could just take the hay directly? So we put hay on one of our gardens and that just decomposes and we just plant through the hay and, and that's the only thing that we need to fertilize with. Um, but we can use things like leaves and straw we can grow nutrient rich plants like nettles and come free and, and make our own fertilizers out of that um so yeah we created a guide which kind of showing 20 ways we could fertilize our gardens using plant-based materials um and um when people get that guide they also join our newsletter and it's really through our newsletter uh that you'll hear about upcoming activities we sometimes do veganic meetups that are open to you know anyone around the world uh to join for free and then we also have you know courses that people can join so joining our newsletter is really really the best way to hear about it yeah absolutely and correct correct us if we're wrong but the um the guidebook that you had mentioned and then the newsletter presumably are super low barrier no cost get the or or are we wrong yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So the free, yeah, that's a free guide to to twenty organic materials. Yeah. Awesome, wonderful. So, what about other resources? Like you just talked about the resources that you guys have created for others to mm-hmm. to learn from. But what about resources that you have learned from in your journey? Whether that be mobile apps on your phone for gardening, or mental health, or leadership, or sleep. Who knows? maybe podcasts that you found valuable or books that you found valuable. We're just kind of trying to extract some resources that have helped you that might help someone else. Yeah, for sure. Um, one one book that actually just came out that I was so happy to read is uh, there, there's a new veganic book called The Veganic Grower's Handbook uh, that our friend uh, Jimmy Bidelli wrote. And uh, that, that, that was just wonderful because we met him when he was first becoming a veganic farmer. Uh, several years ago and it's wonderful to see that he's now you know written a a book about it that can help people who are homesteading or starting a small farm or doing a big garden Um, and um, one resource that I've you know really enjoyed uh, that just came out is uh, the uh, change maker sessions with Kimberly Carroll. She's a um, a vegan coach in in Toronto, and she hosted uh, Animal Justice Academy, and she started hosting twice a month uh, change maker sessions for people who are activists or or who have, um, you know, other you know world changing projects or or or, or uh, ethical businesses, and that's really to help people kind of, you know, avoid overwhelm and have more tools to move forward with their activism. Uh, so I'm really enjoying that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I really, really appreciate to, uh, you know, veg, uh, business networks, you know, like veg network in Canada and like vegan business tribe, um, just because having that opportunity to speak with other people, you know, who have similar goals and are on, you know, a similar mission to make the world a, a more eco-friendly and more vegan place. It's th- those are really my, my favorite resources that I've been appreciating learning from and, and, and connecting with people. Well, that's exactly why in the intro we talked about you being a champion of connection and community. So um, speaking of connection and community, a lot of that comes from being inspired and inspiration mm-hmm. means different things to different people, <laughs> internal, external, what have you. So tell us a little bit more about what inspiration means to you and how you source that or pass it along if you would. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting because I mean, right now I actually live in the woods and I would say I get so much inspiration from, from nature. Um, even as a gardener, I'm I'm really interested in permaculture and permaculture 
in short, is you know, observing natural ecosystems, observing how they work, what makes them efficient, what makes them resilient, and then trying to apply that to other areas of our life, whether that's our, our gardens or, or any other aspect of our life. And so I'd say that's the main place I take inspiration, <laughs> just wandering around in the forest, looking at the plants, looking at the mushrooms, looking at how nature works. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's awe-inspiring. Well, naturally, from a green thumb such as yourself, that makes total sense. And uh, it is absolutely awe-inspiring when you just slow down and take a minute and just be, whether that's in the woods, on the grass, near the water, whatever it might be, very, very inspiring for a lot of people listening or, or in agreement with that. So the last uh, question or conversation started for you, Meg, is centered around wisdom, tips, lessons, maybe <laughs> or maybe not think of it as you giving advice. Um, but that is it is can you share um, for entrepreneurs, um, whether they're in your business, in your industry or elsewhere, do you have any tips or lessons or anything that you think somebody listening might might uh, take advantage of? Yeah, I mean, I like to think of just the importance of taking various things that we're passionate about and seeing if there's a way that we can squish them all together in some, into something that we're super passionate about. And I know that for me, you know, I've always been interested in teaching. I've always, you know, enjoyed, you know, learning and sharing information with people. And then, uh, you know, gardening is something that I'm absolutely fascinated by. Um, so, you know, teaching gardening for me is just such a wonderful combination. And I think, you know, for anyone who is doing entrepreneurship, um, you know, things can start slow or they can, there can be ups and downs. And so I think that having something that we're genuinely super passionate about and where we like doing <laughs> exactly what we're doing, I think it can really help us, you know, keep that motivation up and and just, you know, love what we're doing just just for the sake of doing it. Well, that's a really fresh and unique perspective. What what I heard, and I think other people probably heard, is sort of like passion consolidation. So it's very interesting. Like we've all mm -hmm. heard before, find something that you love and go for it. Don't wait, just go for it. But a very unique and fresh perspective to think of maybe two or three or four or five things that you're passionate about and seeing if there is the ability to consolidate those into one um, and expound upon that. So very interesting. Um, so Meg, before we you already mentioned your website, which we'll mention again, also your Instagram handle here. Um, is there anything that has come up in this conversation that you want to, um, retouch on or any announcements or anything like that? We'll just give you the floor here before we give you your outro. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, people can find us on, on Facebook or Instagram as Learn Veganic. And again, our website's learnveganic.com. And uh, yeah, I really just encourage people to try gardening. I know some people don't have a lot of space, uh, but we've been gardening on balconies, patios, community gardens, neighbors' backyards. Uh, so even if you don't think you have a space, uh, you certainly can find one if you start to look around and get creative with it. Uh, so I really encourage people just to give it a go and even if you end up killing a few plants, you're going to learn a lot from it. We sometimes say that the uh, most, you know, the best gardeners are the ones who killed the most plants because that's how they became good gardeners, uh, just through through trying it and through experimenting. Uh, so yeah, I just encourage people to to give gardening a whirl. Well, you heard it here, folks. If uh, you've had that itching green thumb and you haven't done anything with it, this is sort of your sign to. Uh relieve yourself of any pressure when it comes to gardening because we do often hear I think a lot of us often hear folks are almost uh, they feel guilty or they're worried about the fact that plants just oh it's just me plants always die around me or I always kill plants or what have you but heed, heed Meg's advice and uh, that's all part of the process to become uh, really good and uh, great at gardening so Meg thank you so much again um, you can everybody can learn more www.learnveganic.com and on Instagram at learnveganic and same thing on Facebook as she mentioned learnveganic uh, so this has been a lovely conversation with the co-founder of the veganic agriculture network and the founder of learn veganic this has been Meg Kelly giving us lots of different information and tidbits to chew on and work from and everybody else, uh, we'll catch you very soon for another episode with another great conversation with another great entrepreneur on Veg Networking Canada. Catch you now. Catch you later. <laughs> See you again.